And my friend from Montana, Mr. Rosendale, I wondered if you might comment just a little bit more on um, the importance of, of the amendment that you're offering with respect to uh, transgender surgeries. Uh, I, was, I was not able to hear the specific testimony. So I did not actually uh, oh, you didn't offer that speak one. to I, I, I'm offering, but I didn't speak to it. I, okay, I sorry. Mr. Gates had. Mr. Actually, Gates, you can offer that then, sorry. Yeah, yeah that, uh, that is an amendment I offered uh, because so much of the cost goes into psych. And I, I worry when the military engages in a, in a purported medical practice where like 75, 80% of the overall cost is in the, the psych side, that might not necessarily in order to better capabilities in the military. So if people want to get gender reassignment surgeries, I would suggest that those ought to be on their own time and on their own dime. Uh, thank you. Does Mr. Gentleman from Montana have anything to add to that? I think that summarizes it very well. Thank you. Um, let me ask a question. Um, you know, we see you know, the United States Marine Corps putting out, you know, these kinds of, of uh, social media and advertisements. Do you think that makes our military more likely to defeat our enemy? Uh, Mr. Rosendale, can you see this, uh, a rainbow bullets on a, on a helmet? Anything that detracts from um, the mission, which is to protect our nation and make us the most effective fighting force on earth is a distraction and a waste of money. Uh, I would ask Mr. Davidson, I know you served in, in the armed forces, um, and Mr. James, I believe you did as well. I mean, you see uh, members, for example, here in the United States Air Force saluting the, you know, pride flag in social media. Is that, I think, beneficial to the cohesion of our United States military? Do you think that makes our military more effective and more likely to defeat our enemies? Yeah, I actually have a, an amendment, the, the old glory uh, uh, amendment that would require that the only flag flown on our installations is the United States flag. Uh, we don't need to be flying the pride flag. It's meant to divide. It's not meant to heal and unite. And frankly, it co-ops, uh, you know, God's symbol of the rainbow uh, to promote an agenda hostile to that uh, doctrine. So I don't think it brings people together. I think it divides people. And uh, the administration obviously disagrees, uh, and it puts our troops in a big challenge. They want to focus on the mission, and I think uh, Mr. Gates summed it up well. They're, they want to be on the same team working to accomplish the same mission, and ultimately when that happens, uh, you know, cohesion and unit uh, unity, uh, you know, come together the, the right way. When it's all like PowerPoint slides or, you know, ribbons on your uniform or things like that, flags, uh, it, it tends to divide people. And it certainly, uh, in my own district, has deterred people who have approached me to say, I don't think I can join. Uh, I don't think I can enlist. Uh, I had a young lady turn down an appointment to the Air Force Academy, partially over the COVID vaccine mandate, but also over kind of, you know, what, what has come to be termed as woke ideology, kind of broadly. And it, it's a loss of focus. She still wants to be uh, an Air Force uh, officer at some point, but she doesn't want to be under a military academy. And I think we're losing talent over this, so I think it's right to focus on it. And you lose talent, you hurt readiness. Well, I appreciate that. And since the gentleman referred to academies, I would note, um, you know, the Air Force Academy uh, had a... Uh, presentation, a document that, that uh, was presented under my office that I think I've seen publicly um, that goes through a number of different things about saying that, for example, we should refer to parents, caregivers, or guardians instead of mom and dad. Um, you know, that we should say partner instead of boyfriend, girlfriend, that you, you've got questions here about, you know, the Air Force Academy instructing cadets to not use phrases like, quote, we're all just people. Do you agree? I, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to ask the question. Gonna, yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll yield. If the gentleman will yield. So that very presentation I showed to General Brown, mm -hmm. and I asked him about it, and he said that, th that this type of approach was necessary so that we could better understand the airmen next to us. A and I asked General Brown if he had ever met a person who was in the military who was offended by the term mom and dad, and he said that he couldn't. So it was an example of sort of a, a, an, an academic reflex changing the way we think about parenting uh, in a way that didn't actually help anyone, but that makes our military look ridiculous. So what, what you're pointing out is not something that the committee has not thoroughly examined, and I think it should, should concern you and it should concern all of us that the military didn't, uh, wasn't sheepish about that. They doubled down. Uh